Hi guys, so today I'm going to walk you through how to pre prepare an indigenous Ghanaian meal, Banku and Agbametadi. And I'm starting off by setting the fire. And you can see me using a plastic bag to set the fire. Of course, I had other options available to me. I could have used a piece of paper, um, palm kennel, um, or coconut. But I decided to use a plastic bag because that was what was readily available. So once the fire starts, I'm going to strategically place the charcoal such that it, it catches fire but doesn't starve the fire of oxygen. So that's what I've done here. I'm rinsing my hands now and I'm throwing the water out. So once that's done, I'm going to allow the fire, um, the charcoal to be consumed by the fire. So this is going to take some minutes, but while that's getting, while that's going on, I'm going to prepare some aspect of the meal. So I just poured some water into a pot and then I added corn flour, just a little bit, a pinch. I could have decided not to add the pinch of corn flour um, and just allowed the water to come to a boil, but I decided to add a pinch. That's just what I do and that's what I was taught growing up. So now I'm setting that aside while I allow the charcoal to catch fire. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to grind some pepper. And what you see me using is the earthenware that's very common here in Ghana. And I'm washing the pepper. In fact, everything I'm using has been washed already, but I'm just rinsing it in this case. So I'm going to start off with the pepper. I'm going to grind the pepper first and then move on to the other ingredients. You might want to know, you might ask why I'm not using a blender. To be honest, I think it tastes differently when you use a blender than when you use from when you use an earthenware. So I prefer to use an earthenware. I'm not very good at grinding with the earthenware, but I still prefer it than the to the blender. So while I grind the pepper, I'm going to go ahead and put my pot on the fire. Now I shouldn't have done this so early. I should have actually allowed the charcoal to be consumed by the fire so that the the flame will subside. But I guess I was in a hurry, so I just went ahead and put the, the pot on the fire whilst I continue with my grinding. And with time the smoke will cease, but it's gonna remain so for a while until all the plastic has been consumed by the fire. So here you see me grinding the pepper. This is gonna take a while. I'm not very good at this. Some of my cousins are much better at this than I am. <laughs> this is taking a while. To be honest, I don't want this to be very smooth. I'm just gonna... It's not gonna be a smooth uh, mixture. It's just, it's, there, there's gonna be some particles in there. Now I'm cutting the onions. And I'm going to put the onion. But I don't like it when the tomato is boiled because I feel like it tastes like tomato paste. So I prefer to just cook it naturally. And when you boil the onions, I find it very hard to grind. So I just prefer to do everything naturally. I just rinse it off and then I grind it by hand. So here you see me cutting the onion into some smaller pieces. And then I'm going to grind it. In fact, for me, the hardest thing to grind is the onions. Because I find it to be very slippery. Okay, so now I'm, I'm rinsing my hands off. And then I'm checking to see how the fire is moving along. You can still see some smoke oozing out of the charcoal. That means the plastic is still very much a part of the process. But once, like I said earlier, once that's done, um, you won't see the smoke anymore. So I'm, I'm grinding now what I have as the pepper and onion mixture. So I'm grinding the onion and then eventually I'm going to add the tomatoes. I'm checking to see if the water has come to a boil. It, it hasn't come to a boil yet. So I'll just continue grinding the pepper and the onion.
I actually have to check it a few times. As you can see, the smoke is almost totally gone. And at this point, I'm adding some salt. So this is sea salt, it's rock salt. It's not the smooth, iodated, it's rock salt. And I like to use it when I'm blend grinding because it helps with the process. I think the friction between the rock salt and then the ethanol actually helps with the grinding process. So I prefer to use rock salt. And in fact, I find that when I'm in the village, we typically use rock salt. It's much cheaper and it's just easier to use when you're using the earthenware. Okay, so now I'm adding some tomatoes to the combination. So you can see the tomatoes in there. And the water is almost boiling, but it's not boiling quite yet. So I'm gonna have to wait for a while. So while I wait, I'm just going to have to um, continue to blend my now tomatoes, onion, and pepper mixture. What I'm doing right now is that I'm taking some of the flour and I'm going to add some water to it and then I'm going to form a mixture. Yes, so I'm going to mix it until I have a smooth mixture. And in Togo, we call this a horo. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to prepare a horo now, but I'm just going to pour it in there. And while I pour it, I'm going to have to stir it so it doesn't form any solids in there so i'm gonna stir it for a little while and i'm gonna rinse it with some more of the hot water to get rid of whatever may be left in the bowl and then i'm going i'm using the stirring stick which we call akleda tea um, to get rid of whatever is left in the bowl and now i'm going to cover it ideally i should take the stirring stick out of the pot so that it would come to a, a boil much faster but Obviously, I'm being lazy in my process, so I'm just going to leave it in there while I continue with um, grinding the pepper, the tomatoes, and the onions. So yeah, this is basically the last bit for the grinding. Like I said earlier, it's not going to be a smooth mixture. Yes. And now I'm stirring the pot to make sure that it actually forms a smooth, consistent, porridge-like mixture. My mom is asking me some questions. She's inside. Okay, so this has come to a boil. This is what we call a horror. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add the corn flour. And this part is actually quite tricky. You have to stir very quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get some solid masses forming in there. So you have to move very quickly. That is the trick. You have to be fast with your stirring. And um, you just... <laughs> so one thing about recipes here, somebody said that uh, we don't have recipes. We just add the ingredients until the spirits of our ancestors tell us to stop. That's literally what happens. So I added the flour and I'm just going to stir like until so to stop any solid masses from forming because you need this to be as smooth as possible but it could very easily form solid masses which is which doesn't taste good you know it just makes it a bit more difficult to eat so as much as possible you want to avoid that So you can see it's forming a more consistent solid now so what I'm gonna do, what I'm doing here is that I'm adding some water and I'm just gonna stir it a little bit and then cover it back up and allow it to cook. So I don't like to stir too much. So I prefer to just add water. This is actually the process, but I don't stir too much. I just add some water and then I allow the water to cook, to boil and then cook um, the, the flour. So now I'm back to grinding the tomatoes and onion and pepper. And that is what it looks like. It's still boiling. And that's what the pepper looks like. So I'm tasting to see if there's enough salt. I actually don't take a lot of salt. 
but um, in this case I guess there wasn't enough salt so I just added one more rock to that and I'm pretty much done with the pepper so this is fish I was actually craving this yesterday so I bought this in the market and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some water and then add a bit of salt to give it some taste and I'm just going to wash the fish because this fish was smoked so I'm just gonna add some salt to the water um, I'll stir it so that the salt will dissolve in the water and then um, wash rinse the fish in the water some people take off the skin some people may break off the tail of the fish um, I don't do that because I actually like the taste of the skin and my mom likes the tail of the fish if I think um, we bought the tail we didn't buy the head ideally I really like the head of fish and the eyes but in this case we bought the tail so I'm just gonna rinse it off and then drop it in the pepper and that's basically it I'm done with that so I'm getting rid of the water now so here what I have is I have three different types of water in fact it's water but they are for different purposes so one is for cooking one is for rinsing and then one is basically for washing yes so when you see me moving around there's water for everything that I'm doing so now that the pepper is done I'm going to focus on the a wok blend. that is what is on fire so I'm, I'm cooking and stirring and stirring some more I like to use uh, a napkin to hold it there's actually some a metal which we call zalega that is that you can use to hold the pot in place but I'm so used to cooking on a gas stove that I prefer to hold it with my hand I'm not very experienced when it comes to using the metal to hold the pot in place so I just hold it with my hand so I'm gonna stir it quite rig rigorously as you can see um, so that I don't form any solid masses in there and I'm gonna stir for a while to ensure that it's properly cooked again there is no time limit I know people say like cook for five minutes there's no time limit depends on the number of people you're cooking for um, how much food you have in the pot but that's essentially what it looks like that's the pepper with the fish and this is the awokone I'm still cooking I'm gonna add okay so it's actually done now and I'm rinsing the bowl and I'm just gonna go ahead and fetch it into the ceramic bowl so ideally we would use a calabash to scoop it out of the pot but I couldn't find the calabash so I'm using this plastic which is not the best because using plastic in this heat is really not good but well that's what I had at my disposal so I'm gonna cover it with a plate and then turn it over and so the awokole is gonna take the shape of the ceramic bowl and that's pretty much it that's it for the meal so the bank the awokole and then the pepe oh Ghana you see the fly yeah so I've covered it and the water on top of the bowl is for us to wash our hands and this is what it looks like it's ready yep so my mom okay my mom actually took the tail of the fish already and I'm just gonna break it in there break the fish in there don't mind the bones we're actually gonna eat all that I'm talking to my mom so she actually told me that the banku was too small that's the wokle, the white mass that you see apparently it wasn't enough so this was breakfast by the way yeah this was breakfast I made this for breakfast because um, we're about to travel and we wanted something solid before we started the journey because the journey was gonna be about three and a half hours but this was breakfast this is actually pretty light the awok plane it's not as heavy as amok plane but that's it thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them in the comment section please share and don't tease me i know how to cook bye okay.